What's up guys, welcome back. We're taking another look at this orc today and we're going to be going over how to do the non-metallic metal on his face mask. In order to get maximum contrast we'll begin with a solid black base coat and for that I used some Vallejo model colour black. You want something that has a fairly matte finish but not so matte that it's going to look grey. I found that the Vallejo black is one of the better ones but feel free to experiment with different brands to find one that suits your tastes. Now for the first highlight we're going to start with a fairly dark blue grey tone and this one here is scale colour graphene grey but feel free to use any similar blue grey. You could also mix your own by adding a bright saturated blue into some black. Just use whatever you feel more comfortable with. If we take a look at the structure of the mask, you can see that it's mostly formed with cylindrical shapes with just a couple little flat areas here and there. Try and view each plane as a separate area and work out the basic shape of that surface. Then you can apply simple rules to each one to work out where you want to place your highlights. So on a cylinder, you're painting your highlights along the length directly below your light source. And on a flat area, place it towards the lower edge, angled away from the light. When you're doing this, it's important to remember that you don't have to follow these rules exactly. Instead, try and use them to get a general starting point so that you don't feel lost. If you're new to this idea, have a look at the video that I did on it. It's going to give you a solid overview of all the concepts involved. Alright, so once you've worked out where the highlights go, you can map them out with some of your paint, just blocking in the spots where you want a light to be hitting the surface. We know the front of the mask is a roughly cylindrical shape, so we'll place the highlight around the middle area here. This little bit on the side is a more obvious cylinder, so we'll do the same sort of thing, placing the highlight so it runs along the length of the cylinder. I like to make these a little offset from centre so that you get a sense that the light is coming down at a bit of an angle. That tends to give you a bit more of an interesting effect than if you have it slapped right on top in the centre. This bit on the bottom is a flat area so we're going to highlight towards the lower edge. And we'll do the same on the front here on those little teeth like elements. And again on this larger part we know it's flat so we'll highlight towards the lower edge. You can see that if you treat every surface as its own little separate entity, it becomes quite straightforward as to where you want to place your highlights. It's more of a challenge when you have quite a large surface that doesn't have much variation in shape. On those, you need to be a bit more creative to fill out the space because these sort of mechanical elements where there's a bunch of stuff essentially thrown together, it's a lot easier to lay out a workable highlight pattern. Now that we've laid in our general highlights, we can blend them out by mixing some water into the highlight to get a heavy glaze consistency. Ideally you want it to be transparent, but thick enough so that it's only going to take about 4 applications before we get a decent coverage. If you prefer to use a thinner glaze, that's fine too. You'll just need to use more layers to get the same effect. Once that's mixed, we're going to load some of it on a brush and then gently press the bristles against a paper towel to get rid of most of the glaze. The less you have on your brush, the more control you're going to have of it. You don't want it sloshing about all over the place when you're applying it to the model. The idea is to gently pull the glaze over the join between the base and highlight, always moving the brush towards the highlight. Try not to press down with the bristles when you do this. The harder you press down, the more the glaze is going to flow onto the surface and you want to minimise that, so try and be quite light with the brush. If the glaze pulls on the surface at all, it's going to leave a stain after it dries and that's why you want to first reduce the amount of glaze on the brush and then use a light touch so that what's going on there doesn't come out onto the model too quickly. One more thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that you want to make sure that you allow the glaze time to dry before applying another layer. This is really important. If you don't do that and you apply another layer while the previous one is drying, that layer will rip leaving you with a weird little mark and over time those little marks build up and you end up with a horrible patchy surface that can be quite difficult to correct. So to avoid that, simply work your way around the various surfaces trying not to glaze away on one little area. 
Instead, apply the glaze, then move to another highlight, applying the glaze again, and then move on again to another one. And if you keep doing that, eventually you're going to come back around to the spot that you started with, and by that point it's probably dried, so you're fine to add another layer. If there's only one or two highlights that you're trying to blend out, then you can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying time. That way you're not going to be sitting there like a potato waiting for each layer to dry. Alright, so after you've blended that out, mix a little scale colour white sands into the highlight, lighting it to roughly a medium grey tone. And we'll apply that in the same spots as before, but this time we're going to cover an area about half the size of our first highlights. On these smaller cylindrical areas, I'm also going to add some texture lines to get a more interesting effect. Adding texture to your non-metallics is a really good way to bump them up a notch or two. I'll also pick out some of the little edges at this stage. It's really important to make the edges between planes pop when you're doing this. Just try to keep those highlights nice and small so that you're hitting the very edge. If you make them too wide, you'll need to go back in with either your base or your highlight colour to clean them up a bit. You also want to make sure your highlights are opaque by applying another layer or two. If they're dull, you won't be able to get that nice shiny effect, so it's worth taking the time to apply another layer just to make sure. You can see that I'm doing those little lines again on those two elements. It just helps to give the surface more of a shimmery look. Alright, so it's the same idea here on the top of the helmet. I first paint a strong line along the middle of the highlight, running along the length of the cylinder. Then I turn the model around and paint a series of lines so that they are perpendicular to that initial guideline. And I try to make the lines slightly longer the closer they get to the edge of the surface. If you make the lines all the same length, it doesn't really look as good and it ends up being a bit too uniform. You don't have to take it to LAN-like extremes to get a nice effect. A little bit of texture tends to go a long way. But if you're intimidated by the texture, you can just paint these highlights in normally without the texture and then blend them out in the same way as the previous step. You'll still end up with quite a nice metallic effect, it just won't be quite as detailed looking. But if you've tried non-metallics before and you're looking to push them a bit further, try adding in these little texture lines and see how you get on. If it doesn't work out, you can always just paint over it and try again. There's not a lot of space on the front of the mask, so I can't add that much texture. So instead, I'll just blend that highlight out with some glazes. And that's done in the same way we did the initial highlight, just using that lighter grey colour. To continue, we'll mix some more of the white sand into the highlight, this time making it more of a bright grey. And again, we're going to place them in the same spots, but covering up a much smaller surface area than the last step. This time we won't paint the guideline all the way across the highlight, instead we'll try and paint them on for about half the length, so that it gets brighter towards the edges. That's going to give us quite a nice light flare effect, as if the light is glinting off the edge of the surface. We'll still do the little lines over the top, again making them slightly longer towards each edge of the element. You can see we're starting to get quite a nice effect coming through now. It doesn't quite have that shiny quality that we're going for yet, but we're definitely getting closer. And we'll do the same sort of thing on the other side. There's a lot less surface area on this side, so we'll forget about painting on only half of the width. You could still do that if you wanted, but I decided it would be a bit too fiddly to bother with. You can add a few little dots here and there on your edge highlight, just to give a little more detail. And the same sort of thing on the top section, just using those little texture lines to build up the highlight. The highlights on the front can be blended out using some glazes. Gently pushing the glaze up and over the edges of each highlight until the hard edge blurs out. Add some more white sands into your mix, making it into a very bright grey, almost an off-white. And we'll use this to add some of our higher level highlights. These are mostly going to focus on the edges of each element to help give those edges more definition and also to boost the contrast a bit more. Try to cover quite a small area when you're doing these. Think of these highlights more as just little dots. 
So I made a bit of a mess of those ones there, but that's okay, we can fix that later. It just needs a bit of a clean up. Alright, so the last step is to apply very bright final highlights with some of the white sands on its own. Try not to thin this down much so that you can get a sharp opaque highlight without having to do lots of layers. You want to add very small dots at the brightest point of each highlight, then go back and add a few dots here and there into the darker areas of your edges. I place these fairly randomly and I just try to get an interesting effect. Be careful that you don't overdo this or you'll end up covering up a lot of your work. You need that contrast between the very bright and the very dark, but you also need those mid-tone highlights in there as well. When you lose those, you tend to lose the effect as well, so you need to be careful that you retain that as you apply these final little dots. Alright, I think that's the metal parts of the visor pretty much done. I'll go back later and clean it up a bit. Some of the blending on the front part is slightly rough, but that's not a big issue. I wasn't all that happy with the lenses on the mask, so what I'm going to do is redo them and put that on another video, just so that you can see the whole process. I'm trying to show different ways to do things so that you get a bigger bank of useful information that you can draw from. Anyway, I hope you give it a try and let me know how you get on if you do. Alright, I think that's everything. Thanks a lot for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye for now.